for the Tour de France baked beneath the hottest sun so far yesterday, but Miguel Indurain didn't melt and continues towards the Alps in yellow. Hello and welcome, it's day 17 of the Tour de France and we're now in the town of Alice where the race finished here yesterday. The sun already high in the sky, it threatens to be another scorcher and we're now heading off towards the shadow of the Alps in Gap. The overall situation this morning is very familiar, it hasn't changed for two days now. Miguel Indurain on top, three minutes ahead of Charlie Motte, in third place Gianni Bugno, fourth Claudio Chiapucci, fifth Greg Lamond and sixth Laurent Fignon. Well, although the Spaniard leads this Tour de France now, everybody still talks about Greg Lamont, the rider who lost his yellow jersey in the Pyrenees. Because apparently Greg Lamont is now ill and very tired. Yesterday, certainly, he rode along at the back of the pack. He says he now has a blood condition caused by an infected foot. He also is not sleeping well in the very hot hotel bedrooms at night. He is coming to the start every day seemingly more tired than the previous day. Now, the question is, with the Alps only one day away, can Greg Lamont even reach them? Never mind, take the lead again in this year's Tour de France. It was also a day of crashes yesterday, and the worst crash certainly happened to Sean Yates when he collided with Phil Anderson, among others. Yates had a brake lever puncture his arm, and an artery was burst. The medical team of the Tour de France were up there pretty quickly. They patched him up, and in true Yates style, he got back on his bike, caught the peloton, and finished safely in the pack. He said last night he was feeling OK, so we expect him to sign on this morning. Well, there were two winners yesterday in the Tour de France, not only the brilliant ride by Moreno Argentine, but the very good selection by our winner of our quiz, Lucy Debenham from Weatherby in Yorkshire. Well done, Lucy. The yellow jersey of Miguel Indurain is on its way to you at the end of the Tour, and it will also be signed by yesterday's winner, Moreno Argentine. And to back it up, a signing on sheet from the Tour de France, which will have all of the signatures of the Tour riders on it, except that of Stephen Roach. I'm afraid he left the Tour too quick for us. Well, the Ariostia team had their second win of the Tour in two days yesterday, and behind every stage winner, there is always a strong team. Here's Paul Sherwin to explain their role. Whilst Marino Argentin was leading the race alone on the road to Alice, his teammates were not sitting idle in the main field. Every time there was a chasing group behind him, there was at least one or two so-called policemen with it. They are known as policemen because they're there to marshal operations, like Lietti and Goltz here, who will remain in the slipstream of the two others to act as a psychological anchor, or when the occasion arises, pretend to move to the front, then cut their effort, breaking the rhythm of the chasers. When there isn't a breakaway, the whole team will mass at the front to discourage any organized chase, or join any other breakaway attempts, as yet again Lietti does when he jumps into the slipstream of Yella Nidum, never once contributing to the effort of Nidum's chase, but slowing him down whenever possible. All these small operations discouraged every chase possible, and gave Marino Argentin the extra little help he needed to solo to Ariostia's second victory in two days. And here's the route today, the 16th stage from Alice to Gap and into the base of the Pyrenees. It's 215 kilometres, that's 134 miles. Just one small climb in the middle, but it goes steadily uphill now, away from Alice and up towards the Alps. And I'm afraid Sean Yates did not sign on this morning. He apparently sent a message to his team manager, Jim Okovitz, uh, that he's going to hospital to have his arm investigated, but he, would, he was expecting to be at the team hotel by the end of the day. Miguel Indurain, happy under the pressure of wearing the leader's yellow jersey, and I honestly feel he hasn't faced any pressure since taking the lead in the Pyrenees. He's always looked well into control. Greg Lamont, I'm afraid, is certainly not happy. There's really a big query on his future in this year's Tour de France uh, because every day he complains now of feeling more and more tired. There was no action at all for the first four hours of racing today. The riders just about reaching 32 kilometres an hour. That's 20 miles an hour. And the first attack came on the Côte de Saint-André 
149 kilometers into the race and Tiddy Claverola wearing a chapeau, a French hat here as he goes over the top of the climb. In second place is Claudio Chiapucci, seven seconds behind him and he was alongside the Spaniard Leonis Berusia. But the attack there by Claverola has been consolidated. We're now with the race here and there's a lead group and one or two surprise names in it. Well, surprise names, definitely Claudio Chiapucci never misses an opportunity to try and break away. He's there already, but also Laurent Fignon, Stephen Rooks, who we've not seen very much of so far, Gert Jan Tunisa, Gianni Bugno is in there, Fabrice Filippo from the Monesto squad is there just to make sure that there's no, no success to this breakaway. Thierry Claverola, the man who started that breakaway, Tibaldi and Dominguez. So a very good group, but the main, be main field being led along at the moment by the Bonesto riders under the control of Miguel Indurain. Well, an interesting move indeed, especially on the eve of the big Alpine crossing to Alduez. Claudio Chiapucci, who, as you know, he and Greg Lamond have been at loggerheads uh, since last year's Tour de France. Well, today it's reported they've made friends. And so Chiapucci still being the inconsistent attacker he is. He doesn't seem to plan anything. He takes his chance. There he is now in the group. This is Gianni Bugno, the champion of Italy. Remember, three minutes, ten seconds down on the lead at Miguel Indurain. And now for the first time since Indurain took his lead in the tour, there he is now in the yellow jersey. He is having to counter the action. And it might be a little bit of a surprise, this attack today. It will be a surprise because it's not the day that everybody expected the attack. I'm not surprised to see Kia Pucci attacking, but I am surprised to see uh, Gianni Bugno and Laurent Fignon in there as well. That's a very dangerous move. There's Le Mans very near the front of the peloton, so maybe he's not too bad today after all the rumours we've heard that he may not start. He may not start tomorrow because of this blood disorder. But Bernesto are there at the front, not panicking too much. Strange to see Pedro Delgado at the front there doing all the work. He's in a different role than we've seen him in the past. He's now the worker as opposed to the leader. So the yellow jersey in third place while his teammates do the chasing. Greg Lamont has made a bicycle change twice today, so his troubles do seem to continue, don't they? Incidentally, one or two of you have telephoned in and left messages as to what has happened to the driver of the car that hit Le Monde on the climbs in the Pyrenees. The answer is nothing at all. He was the team car of Gatorade, and the driver tried to get through to Bugno. It wasn't an intentional collision. They do happen in the Tour de France, but in the favour of the driver, as soon as he crossed the line, he went straight over and apologised to Greg Lamont for the incident. And by the way, Greg Lamont is expected to ride in Britain the week after the Tour de France. He is scheduled to ride in the Wincanton Classic, the next round in the World Cup, which is down in Brighton, the Sunday after the Tour de France finishes in Paris. And that's a full day of racing. It should uh, last all of the day, and it takes in the famous climb of Ditchling Beacon. So let's hope you can find time to go to Brighton. Now back to the Tour de France, and it's good to see the riders, despite the heat today, and it gets hotter and hotter down this part of the world, are uh, really attacking the course. The crowd's enormous now, and this is the hors d'oeuvre to the Alps tomorrow. And when we go to Alpes Paul and I feel we are going to see the biggest crowds this tour has ever seen. Definitely. They've been building up ever since we came across from the Pyrenees. The Dutch people are starting to infiltrate the crowds there. We didn't see too many Dutch down there in the south, but as we get nearer to their Mecca, the Alduez, they're really starting to pour in. Well, the two riders in the breakaway today, Stephen Rux has happy memories as we race into the base of the Alps today because the day after Gap two years ago when Jelle Nijdam was the winner here, then Stephen Rooks went on to win the time trial to Orsier Mallet. And, of course, Gert Jan Ternisse had his moment of glory on Alp Duez. Well, that's the situation at the moment. After the break, we'll bring you right up to date with Gert Jan Ternisse. We'll take a break. Tomorrow, the race heads out from Gap, 125 kilometres to Alpe d'Huez. Now, if there's any mountain on the tour route that the Dutch have made their own, it's this one. And if there's one Dutchman who wants to win there more than anyone else, it's Gert-Jan Toynisser. Even by the standards of professional cycling, Toynisser is intense. And in full flow, with his wild race face on, he rides like a man possessed. He inspires an equally fanatical following. His fans were there when he claimed out Duez on his way to the King of the Mountains jersey in 1989. And they still turned out last year when he was the tour's most notable absentee. The reason was his third positive drugs test in two years. And despite his claims of innocence, he was banned for 12 months. 
That meant more time at home with his wife Liska, but not much. In the past year, he cycled over 12,000 kilometers. In May, he set up a training camp in the heat of the Canaries with Stephen Rokes. He's also climbed 200 mountains, including Alpe d'Huez in 42 minutes, two less than the record. Yeah, every day uh, was uh, you were training and training for nothing, and that was a long time, and a year is a very long time that you must train. After his ban was lifted five weeks ago, Gert Jan's form had been good up until the tour. In the Pyrenees, he lost 14 minutes on the stage to Valeron alone, but there's always Alpe d'Huez. Yeah, I've trained him a lot, and I hope that I will be good there. Well, Gary, there is Gert Jan turning to third on the left of our picture in the breakaway, but we've witnessed a marvellous race today, and the riders trying to steal a march over Miguel Indurain are Claudio Chiapucci and Laurent Fignon and Gianni Bagno. At one stage, they had taken back a minute of their deficit, but right now there is a tremendous fight back, and they are riding just about 15 seconds behind. Terrible mistake by Miguel Indurain there because this break wasn't really a major attack. It went over the, th the third category climb just a little bit further down the course there. A little bit of a moment in attention and the break formed. And what a break it was and it's been a, a real chase for Indurain to try and get back into contention. It was up around a minute and I think he was very lucky to have some friends amongst one or two of the other Spanish teams there. Well, the amazing thing is, Paul, that he didn't look as strong as we, as we all thought he would have done. He's really had to work hard to bring this back. In fact, Pedro Delgado is one of the riders who had to do a lot of work for him to pull this back together. And but there you we... can see the chase now. In fact, only in the last 10 kilometers, the Benestos have received considerable help from the Spanish Amaya team, and in particular, the two French riders on that team, Ronan Pensek and Patrice Esno. And it was only when the two boys in the pink jersey, I think you can see them now on the front of this chase group, came to the front to drive the bunch behind, did the gap come down. The Bonesto team seemed unable to cope with this attack today. And I'm quite sure that Gianni Bugno and Laurent Fignon and Claudio Chiapucci will feel that this attack today may not have worked, but it's proved something. And that is the Bonestos aren't as strong as we think. Well, definitely not. I think they were caught unawares, though, because this break went on the climb and the chase went straight away and split the main field. One rider missing from this group uh, with Miguel Indurain there is Jean-Francois Bernard, who would have been a big help, and Dominique Arnaud, who would normally, under the same situation, have been there. But now you can see the whole field coming back together. But that must have been quite a fright for Miguel Indurain. So the leaders surrender to the chase uh, after 25 miles, 40 kilometres. The race is together again. And now it might be a day of the spitters, but let's see. And now we are about 11 kilometers from the line and we're looking at Greg Lamont. Can you believe this? The rider has launched an attack on the run into gap with the, with the mountains of the Alps rather right on his shoulder here where he faces the climb to Alduez tomorrow. Greg Lamont has now gone out on the attack and this Paul will go down as one of the cheeky moves of this year's Tour de France. Well, definitely. It's got to be good for his morale, though. His doctor said this morning that if he could get through these two days when he's had a problem with this blood disorder, he may well be competitive again for the Alps. After rumours were rife this morning that he might not even start, this is incredible. Well, the breakaway came about when Phil Anderson went clear. He was joined by a number of riders, including two of the Ariostia riders, Cassani and Lietti. Then Jean-Claude Colotti... Uh, Fondriest of Italy, Chauzas, Vicho and De Vries and Greg came up with them and as soon as he got there he did about one turn at the front and he jumped away on his own and the gap is round about 13 seconds to the main field. The main field by the way is the yellow jersey group and it is only about 35 riders strong. The green jersey worn of course by the sprinter Abdu Japarov which is in the main part of the race today is now more than five minutes behind because of the action over these last few kilometers and Greg Lamont now speeding on down towards Gap there is the remnant of the chase group behind him and this looks like it's David Castell no it's Lietti who's, uh, Lietti who's come across and he's joining Greg Lamont and that's a strong rider to go with him well Lietti's ridden superbly over the last few days and he's joined Lamont here but this has got to be very good for Lamont's morale after all the uh, hard days he's had the last couple of days to try and put him back into some frame of mind to be able to attack over the next couple of days. 
And this looks like the Greg Le Mans that we know of old, always wanting to get on with the racing. The same Le Mans who came out when this race started in Lyon, and he took advantage of that first road race breakaway that put him up in the top three for the opening week of the Tour de France. Now look at the extra speed that Lietti is turning up here. This is a big help for Le Mans. They've got about 15 seconds, over, 15 seconds lead over the moment over the rest of the riders who are with them, and they've got 10 seconds lead over the rest of the main field. But this really goes to show the kind of stuff that Le Monde is made of. When people are saying he's finished, he wants to fight back, he'll definitely go down fighting, that's for sure. We've got five kilometers to go there. There's the banner to confirm that. And these two riders are pulling away from their former companions. They've got 20 seconds lead at the moment. But this is an incredible move by Le Monde. He's such an intelligent rider. Whenever everybody else uh, writes him off, he always uses his head. He's recuperated carefully over the last two or three days, and he's come back to form and really pulled one out of the bag here. Well, he loves the Alps, and there you can see them all around us now in the Tour de France, the final big obstacle between the Tour riders and the, Le and the uh, champs Elysees next Sunday. And the Panasonics continue to try and find a stage win. They've had a very poor tour, really. They've always been in the chasing role, never in the leading role. Phil Anderson, the winner of the stage in the Camper, and that was for the Motorola's first ever stage win in the Tour de France. Well, the monster time of the five kilometer banner there was 18 seconds over this chasing group, of which was originally eight riders, and 45 seconds over the main field, so he may well, at the end of the day, manage to steal back one minute on the rest of his rivals and put him back into contention for the Tour de France this year. Well, these riders must be absolutely fried out there today. It has been so hot, and they had an easy start to the day, but my goodness me, life has hotted up over this last hour and a half of racing. It's been a superb finish as we've raced down towards Gap. And Greg Lamond, he certainly looks tired here, but he's firing on all four cylinders again. 18 seconds to the group he's left, 45 seconds to Mayo Jean-Paul. It's possible. Well, everything's possible. This group doesn't look to be going quite as fast as the Le Mans group. Le Mans was really, I think, helped by the fact that Marco Lietti managed to come in there and join him, and this could be a great success for Le Mans. So, a strange alliance, an American-Italian tandem racing down the boulevard towards the finish here. Two years ago, it was Mark Maggio in the leading group of six, and they were caught inside the last kilometre. We are now inside at three kilometres to go. And it was Jelle Nydam who took the prizes for the day when he jumped away in the last 500 metres. At the moment, this race is finely balanced, and the same could happen again. But Le Mans is gaining terrific confidence today as we now race across the city of Gap. We're here for only the 16th time in the history of the Tour de France, which always surprises me because it is right on the edge of the Alps, and tomorrow, of course, we'll be right in the heart of them. Well, there's no, uh, there's no organization of this group behind. I just caught a glimpse of Chozas. He's the rider who helped Le Mans get up to this group originally, and then he left the group to go away there. But let's not forget, although we're talking about the brilliant tactical move of Le Mans, watching the other leaders chase, watching Indoran chase those three leaders who were away before, Bugno, Chiapucci, and Fignon waiting his time. But let's not forget the Ariostia team who've rode brilliantly over the last three days. They've won two stages the last three days. Could they win a third one now? Well, it's on the cards because uh, Lietti is a good sprinter, but so too is Greg LeMond when he's fired up, and I think he is right now. It's uh, two kilometres to go. These kilometres are dropping off now so quickly. Le Monde is two kilometres, 1.2 miles from the finishing line. And there is Greg LeMond now giving it just about everything. He'll come up to the end of this boulevard, eventually swinging down towards the home straight. It's a long straight finish. He wants more speed out of Lietti. He shouted there to him to come through. No time to slow now because this group will be right on him, the remnants of the chase group. And the rider sitting at the back, David Cassani here. He won't be doing any work, of course. He knows his teammate has got across to the lead. Ali Ostia going for the third straight win, and I can't remember a team doing that. Well, 45 seconds taken here for Greg Lamond. It won't improve his overall position, but it will close the gap considerably on the man ahead of him, Claudio Chiapucci. And on a day when everybody felt the leaders would remain as the status quo. There's the kite coming up now. Greg Lamont still clear with Marco Lietti. Now, can he win and end a perfect day?
Well, I think the way he's fired up at the moment, these two riders have all been sharing, they've both been sharing the work as much as the other one. And Le Mans is so fired today, he may well produce anything. He's got the strength, he's got the knowledge. It's up to the, uh, it's up to the line now. I think we're just going to have to wait and see which one is going to lead the sprint out. Superb crowd in gap. The temperatures, again, absolutely scorching. And Greg Lamont, who normally likes racing in the heat, but has seemed to be quite vulnerable this last couple of days, is now enjoying the sun of the Alps. They went past the kilometre flag there. These two riders have 22 seconds lead on the six or seven riders chasing them. So it looks as if it's in the bag. These two riders are going to sprint out the stage victory in gap. There's about 600 metres to go for these two boys. Well, that's good enough, I think. And now Greg is bringing home Lietti, and I think Lietti is going to take him because he's going to be fresher. Can Greg get his wheel? No, he can't. Lietti's gone clear. Ali Ostia for the third day running are uh, winning a stage of the Tour de France. Absolutely incredible. But Greg Lamont has fought his way back and you have to say he is a most magnificent athlete and he does not know the word to give up. So Greg Lamont second, Lietti takes the stage. The importance is Greg Lamont second place. This is how far he was ahead of the field. And the group coming in right behind Maurizio Fondrius getting away just off the group there to take their place. And the Mayo Jean of Indurain coming in in that back group. Jean-Claude Colossi takes fourth. Cassani fifth. Phil Anderson was sixth. And the group comes home here. But they're all in now. And the yellow jersey is in that group. But what a surprise and what a great piece of riding by Greg Lamond. He has forced his way back into this Tour de France. The riders tonight may not sleep with the heat in the hotel rooms, but I'll tell you, they may not sleep either when they have to work out now just how good is Greg Lamont. And this result will make very happy reading tonight for Greg Lamont, finishing second behind Marco Lietti, the third Ariostia rider in a row to win a stage in this year's Tour de France. In third place, Maurizio Fondriest. Fourth, we have Jean-Claude Colotti. Fifth, David Cassani. And sixth, the Australian, Phil Anderson. On the podium tonight, again in yellow, Miguel Indurain, but surely now he's worried. His team did not cope very well with that attack today, led by Bunyo, Pignon and Chiapucci. Greg Lamont closes the gap a little bit, 5 minutes 8 seconds behind this morning, 4 minutes 42 seconds behind tonight, but basically no change overall in the race. And straight after Greg Lamont crossed the line, Paul Schoen was with him. Greg. Your team doctor said that uh, if you were ill, a couple of days and you may well be competitive again for the mountains and the Alps. Oh, I feel better, much better than, uh, say, three days ago, that's for sure. But uh, today, everybody says all three days before to recuperate. This isn't recuperation today. Yesterday wasn't recuperation. The day before wasn't recuperation. A day off is recuperation. These days have been extremely hard, but today's performance must make you feel a lot more comfortable. Oh, I feel better than yesterday, but I am not confident at all for tomorrow. Uh, I'm just going to follow the what, follow the best I can. Well, tomorrow we go to Alpe d'Huez, and Greg Lamont has ridden well there before. Let's hope he can do so again. Remember all of today's results on page 465 on Fortel. This is the final week of the Tour de France. It's also the last chance for you to try and win a yellow jersey. But what a yellow jersey. This time it'll be the winner's yellow jersey at the end of the Tour de France. All you have to do is name the person you think will win the stage on the Champs-Élysées on Sunday. Put his name on a postcard and send it to us at this address. Tour de France competition, Fortel, 142 Lower Marsh, London, SE1, 7AE. And the very best of luck. The winner will autograph the yellow jersey, as will the winner of that stage. It's been a marvellous day in the Tour de France today, attacks when we never expected them, and we never expected Greg Lamont to finish second. I would bet the surprises will continue tomorrow on Alpe d'Huez. What a marvellous day out we expect. See you tomorrow night, remember, at 6.30. But for the moment, from Gary, Paul and me, goodbye. <laughs>